Welcome to Anselmo Academy of Music and the Arts, and we are live on Facebook and sending you warm greetings from New York City. Uh, you just heard Concert Etude for Horowitz, uh, composed and performed by Dr. Uh, Steven Spooner, and we believe he used the theme, uh, We Are the Champions by Queen. Um, today we present a special broadcast dedicated to a teacher and student featuring Professor Steven Spooner and two of his students, Edison Chen and Ningjin Zen. Uh, hello guys and welcome. Please say hi. Hi. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hi, so nice to be here. Thank you. It's it's an honor to have you guys here join us today. We will feature our guest uh, performance videos, uh, picture gallery, uh, and dialogues in just a few moments. But first, <clears throat> a couple of announcements from Anselmo Academy. Our summer enrollment is open with a very flexible schedule, and we have a special early bird promotion uh, thank you so much for this flyer. Uh, please contact us for further detail uh, and we'll be happy to assist you with any uh, lessons throughout the summer. Uh, next, um, additional online events are being planned for the summer and we will post updates in our uh, next uh, newsletters coming up. And we have two last recital dates uh, of our Anselmo Academy students uh, in Manhattan tomorrow, May 25th, and also on June 6th on the Upper East Side. If you'd like to attend, uh, the, this, these events are free and open to the public, and you can see uh, all the details in any recent newsletter at our website, anselmoacademy.org. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and other social media platforms. Come and in post with any questions and subscribe to our two e-newsletters that you could find at our uh, homepage of anselmoacademy.org by scrolling uh, down right. Uh, first newsletter is called Academic and the second one is called On Stage and it will give you an opportunity to stay in touch and updated about any events like this one today, any broadcast, any special programming. Uh, we are a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization, and we organize uh, multiple lessons and classes throughout New York and New Jersey since 2001. And we hope you enjoy our program today. Okay, wonderful. Um, if we could please have a uh, Stephen uh, uh, profile picture on the screen, as I go through his uh, bio. Thank you very much. Um, well, Steven Spooner is uh, certainly a um, uh, critically acclaimed uh, concert uh, pianist, hailed by audiences and critics uh, around the globe. Um, Fanfare Magazine wrote, a pianist in the tradition that many believe died with the likes of Horowitz, Arau, Bollet, Sifra, and wild. Uh, and uh, American Record uh, Guide wrote, uh, a pianist of apparently limitless raw technique that's almost note perfect. Stephen has been engaged at many of the world's most prestigious venues such as Carnegie Hall, the Great Hall of Liszt Academy in Budapest, Salcorto in Paris and Shanghai concert hall, among many others, as soloist with orchestra and as a recitalist. Um, he um, reinvented the solo recital by allowing audiences to vote on the spot for one of the several programs. And like a golden age pianist, his concert often feature his own compositions and virtuoso transcriptions like you just heard. Stephen is a prize winner at all seven international piano competitions he entered and top prize winner at the Hilton Head International Piano Competition and first prize and recipient of the NICAM Career Grant as a most outstanding pianist in French music at the Paris Conservatory. In 2008, he was awarded the Ivory Classics 
foundation price that enabled him to study less with the legendary virtuoso Earl Wilde. Um, Stephen has released more than 30 recordings on Naxos, a life of music and other record labels, including um, a project of 16 albums honoring his heroes called Dedications. And his latest 10 volume recording project, Aspects of List, uh, exploring the many facets of the List repertoire, and it was released in 2022. Um, Steven Spooner is professor of piano at the Peabody Institute, and he has studied at the Tbilisi Conservatory in the Republic of Georgia, and also at Moscow Conservatory in Russia, as well as Indiana University. Uh, he has served on the faculty of many of the most prestigious summer festivals and is increasingly in demand for his insightful master classes at leading conservatories across the globe. He's artistic director of the Chicago International Competition and Festival and often serves on juries of international competitions. He is dedicated and caring teacher of students from around the world and he has formed winners of multiple prizes at important international competitions. Stephen Spooner is a Steinway artist. And next, we're going to feature another uh, video of uh, Stephen performing Liszt Hungarian Rhapsody number 13. Take a look. Wonderful, Stephen. Uh, lovely meeting you today. So we're going to proceed to our uh, conversation. I have um, pre-selected some questions for you. And so let's uh, start uh, with the first one. Uh, who is the most influential person in your life, if you had to pick one? Uh, you mean about music? Um... Or, or not necessarily? The... Well, it's it's a difficult 
question, but I, I would say in, in music, I, I had really one very influential person and that was my main teacher, uh, Nodar Gabunya. Nodar was um, a genius. I don't use that word lightly. He was a virtuoso pianist. He was a great composer. He was intellectually uh, amazing, but his human characteristics were very great. And he was, uh, he was a very generous teacher. Um, so yeah, I would have to say it is he. I, I mean, I hate to leave other teachers out. I got so much from so many people, you know, and a wide, a sort of wide schooling, um, you know, because I got to work with people from a, a variety of schools um, that otherwise I wouldn't have gotten those things. You know, I worked with Hokanson and Schubert Leader or Battersby in, in a forte piano playing or Karen Shaw. I mean, the many teachers offered a lot, but, but Gabunia was, was seminal. And influence. Was, let me clarify, he was from Tbilisi, uh, Georgia, where you met. Tabunia mm -hmm. was the student of Gelden Weser uh, throughout the conservatory, but he was also the student of Hachaturian uh, in composition. He finished a doctorate or aspirant in both composition and in uh, piano. Uh, he was uh, very close friends with a young pianist and they had a duo together and they premiered uh, the Bartok Sonata for two pianos and percussion. They were, I'm told that they were inseparable and that best friend was uh, Nikolai Kapustin. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, uh, his, his background was quite, uh, quite something. He was, after, after uh, his work with Hachaturian, uh, Shostakovich became his mentor and uh, wrote a very warm letter of recommendation for him that I saw. Fantastic. And um, so leading to my next, next question. So describe circumstances that led you to come to Moscow and Belize or, or whichever order that it was, and how did it change the course of your life, professional life or, or otherwise? Well, I, I thank God every day that it happened. Um, I was more or less on a track of staying in the United States. My teacher in New Orleans, where I grew up, had been a student of uh, George Shandor. Mm -hmm. And uh, even- he was, he was a professor at Juilliard when I was- Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually was already sending me to have lessons mm -hmm. uh, with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had this freak um, chance to meet uh, Gabunia and Nikolaeva as they were uh, coming through America. And Gabunia was the rector of the conservatory in the former uh, Georgian Republic. And he had the ability to make things happen uh, as a rector. And I had a master class with him and I, I recognized right away that this is what I needed. And I expressed to him my, how, how I would love to, to study there. And I know it's, it would be impossible. He said, actually, for the first time, it's, it's actually somewhat possible. So it took a couple of years to work out the bureaucracy. And I started my undergraduate, continuing with my teacher in hopes that this would happen. And it did eventually happened. In 1991, I got to go over and start my undergrad. Now, he was a very generous and liberal person. And any time that I went to Moscow, which was frequently, uh, because as you might remember, being a Muscovite yourself, at that time, you could fly Aeroflot for $10 to Moscow from Tbilisi. Uh, and any time I was there, 
he would put me in touch with all of his friends, people such as Nikolaeva, Merzhanov, um, even someone like uh, Naumov. And I studied there Kakstajur, or like a, you know, sort of part-time student mm -hmm. until Merzhanov offered me a very special opportunity to come and do a postdoctorate with him at the conservatory. Um, it was one of my great regrets that I couldn't take him up on this. And then uh, he, at the time, was the oldest, most senior professor at the conservatory. And I, I, I missed that opportunity because he passed away. Okay. So how long did, it, did this period last? Of you? It was three academic years. Mm, wonderful. And how did you tell us a little bit more? How was your life as an American uh, in, in like a different planet, wasn't it? Well, um, it was, it was. Uh, I'm very grateful for that time, but it was definitely exciting. I lived through the Georgian Civil War um, and I lived in the war zone. Uh, I was so skinny when I came home, my mother wept and she didn't recognize me off the plane. <laughs> um, uh, it was quite dangerous, quite, quite dangerous. Our, our apartment caught fire three times from mortar fire. Um, and, uh, and then another time in Moscow this time, the, the white revolution of Yeltsin happened when I was there too. So I was stuck uh, living through two, two, uh, quite intense political events and uh maybe it's all your fault maybe but i i lived through both of them and mm. uh and lived to tell about it so amazing fantastic okay next question um more on the uh, moving to you as a as a pedagogue uh what is your role as a pedagogue what do you think um my role is to become dispensable My, my role is to illuminate students' desires, not my own. Uh, my role is to inspire, not to, not to give a voice um, to the student, but to help them find their voice. Mm. My, it's funny to say it, but um, my, my role is to help them read the music accurately, which is a lifelong study. Um, that is a great uh, answer. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the things. Wonderful. Uh, moving on, uh, if you could rewind your life, would you change anything? Mm. Well, about my musical life, I would, I would definitely get involved earlier. I was a late bloomer as a pianist, and I never felt like I was ready. Um, I, I struggled early on with technical issues and I had a lot of catching up to do and I never felt ready mm -hmm. and I wish if I had gone back I would have participated in things perhaps a little bit earlier um, uh, you know the saying is that uh, things don't get easier by not doing them very true. Tell us a little bit, how did uh, your, your piano studies, how, when, when did you know that you you going to be the pianist, the concert pianist? When, because you are not coming from a musical family, correct? No, but not a musical family. In fact, I hated piano that first year. I was that kid that every teacher hated to see coming to their door. Mm -hmm. you know, fresh from the football game you know, unpracticed. Um, so uh, I, I had a very passionate first teacher who she, she tried everything to get me interested. And then she eventually found Chopin. 
and and it was like Paul on the Damascus Road. I was suddenly, I don't know, struck by lightning or something when it happened. It made a deep impression, that music. Oh, you can see, look, what an impression it made on me. Uh, that Is that your phone? It's my phone case. Oh, it's yeah. parts of Rubenstein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that first recording was Arthur Rubenstein. Mm. Um, but the moment I decided to be a pianist happened later. And it was actually, you might even know her. She's a person very dear to me. And she's a great pianist. She was a student of Zak. Um, and her name is Faina Lushtak. Um, she's a, a professor at Tulane University in New Orleans where I was living and I wouldn't miss any of her recitals. She's a wonderful pianist, incredible mm -hmm. artist of the highest refinement. Um, and I went to her recital, I think I was 14 or so and I announced to my parents on the way home that I think I want to be a pianist. That is great. Okay. Um, if not piano, any other deep, uh, you know, interest, passions that you'd like to share? Uh, as I said, music really dominated my life to a point that it's hard to imagine doing something else. It really is. Um, of course, I had other interests. I, I was very involved in sports. Um, and I think that that interest helped me physically in the piano. Um, but I don't know, maybe espionage or... Um, <laughs> maybe a doctor, I think. I, I enjoy... I enjoy um, I enjoy helping people get over their issues. Mm. A psychiatrist then? Uh, and, and physically too. I work a lot on technique and trying to free people up. And also my students sometimes refer to me as the Santa Claus of piano because I kind of know what they're thinking or I know what's going on in their mind. That's great. Wonderful. Okay, uh, we're done with the questions and we're gonna proceed with the picture gallery that we've put together. And as we go through each picture, please uh, you know, provide captions for it. Let's go. Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, this was a concert in Singapore I gave. I remember that it's a beautiful piano there at the, what's the name of that hall? It's really, famous hall really beautiful place what year about oh i don't know uh maybe 10 years ago maybe less okay it's hard to know because my hair never changes so <laughs> same hairstyle oh this is a master class i was giving just last summer at uh, weatherford international competition Oh yeah, this is a very interesting photo. In fact, I was, I was talking to Bob McDonald about, about this just two or three days ago. A few people know that the Georgian School of Piano Playing, which was quite rich, produced so many important pianists. And in fact, it's a very small country, just two and a half million people. Uh, but here is one example. The first job of... Joseph and Rosina Levine was right here in Georgia. And you might know that they went on to create another school in America called the Juilliard School. So a lot of people don't realize that, but here they are. And you can see Rosina's like really striking eyes here. You recognize her immediately. And then I've never seen that. Where, picture. where is she exactly? She's 
you see Joseph with beard, which is unusual, seated in the middle. Yeah. But she's seated uh, just beside him where those two young ladies are, are sitting down. They're leaning on her. And that's her. She must have been in her 20s. Okay. So she's to his left. Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was in Georgia. Yeah, this is his class. This was when I was there for the anniversary of the conservatory. Um, I, I went through the art museum that they had. They had a display of all the artifacts from the conservatory. And this class picture was there. It, it struck me. Right. What year about? It says there 1909. Is that what it says? Or uh, 1899 and 1901. That was this class period. Great. Uh, this is a picture, uh, not of me, but I think of uh, the great pianist uh, Sokolov. Am I wrong? Are you serious? That's not you? It's not me. It looks it, it looks very much like I know it, it looks like me, but it's uh it's uh I, I believe it's Sokolov because he's in I think he's in the young pioneer uh outfit. Exactly. I was wondering about that. Yeah. But I assume it was you. Oh wow, you found all these pictures. Here's uh me with John Perry, who uh uh, we were on the Amalfi Coast faculty together, and I remember this was my first year. It was, I think, 2008. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, you found all these old pictures, me and Yo-Yo Ma. My wife always makes fun of this picture because she took this picture, and we have all these good pictures, but then the pictures I took of her were, she didn't like them. They were no good. But yeah, this was the first time I saw Yo-Yo Ma performing in Kansas City. Oh, this is uh, me quite a long time ago. I'm playing a concert in Jakarta, Indonesia, and, I'm, and this is with the staff of the uh, concert organization. <laughs> this is not a real picture. I figured uh, that. <laughs> this, this was a gift that my students gave me because I'm so crazy about Richter that they, they photoshopped my picture. And actually the person here is Arthur Rubenstein. And you can tell by his hand because he always wore that ring on his little finger. And so this is Arthur Rubenstein's hand, but it, they put my face in, and many people thought that there I was with Richter, but it's not, it's not a real photo. Awesome. And this is me with the great Kissin uh, after uh, meeting him for the first time at Verbier. Yeah, this was an unforgettable night. Uh, my One of my best friends in the world is uh, Sergei Babian. Uh, and he has, of course, become the main partner of, of uh, duo partner of Marta Argerich and such a distinguished, famous pianist. Uh, in fact, I saw him just last week play a concert. Um, but he played with Marta uh, at, at Cleveland in Severance Hall, and he invited me to the concert, and we had an all-night party with Marta Argerich following the concert. It was unforgettable. I'll never, ever forget this night. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, for sharing uh, such great um, uh, you know, um, thoughts and, and emotions uh, that you brought forth. I really appreciate it. Okay, we are moving on. Uh, next is Edison, Edison Chan, and we are going to uh, feature his bio and his uh, video. Can we please have Edison's picture on the screen? Wonderful. 
Uh, Edison Chan began studying the piano at the age of four and a half. He's a seventh grader at Oxford Middle School in Overland Park, Kansas, and is currently studying with Dr. Steven Spooner, who is his principal teacher, and Sean Chan. Uh, 13-year-old Kansas City native Edison Chen has been selected as one of only 24 elite young artists to compete in the 2023 Clyburn International Junior Piano Competition in Dallas this June. He was also selected as one of the 16 competitors in the 2023 Cleveland International Piano Competition for Young Artists. Uh, he has won top prizes in many major competitions, including, and I'm just going to mention a few, first prize at the 2019 Chicago International Piano Competition and a special jury discretionary award of the 2019 Kaufman Music Center International Youth Piano Competition. Uh, despite being only 12 when he competed in the junior division, he was named a third prize winner of the 2022 MTNA National Piano Competition and honorable mention at the University of Minnesota School of Music, prestigious E Piano Junior Competition in 2021. We're going to post full bios of each of our guests. So I'm moving on along with um, uh, Edison's bio, uh, saying that he also enjoyed math and playing chess, and he was a finalist of the Math Counts National Competition in 2022, as well as 2023 AIME, American Invitational Mathematics Examination Qualifier. He uh, is also a USCF-rated chess expert. He loves to read books on science and watch BBC Earth and the Three Blue, One Brown Math Channel. And we're going to feature uh, Edison performance of Ravel Alvarado. Take a look. Bravo, Edison. We'll get back to you shortly. We are next going to feature uh, Janison Jen, uh, who is also a student of Stephen, and she's a young classical pianist with a passionate artistic mission. Can we please have her profile picture on the screen as I go through her accolades? Thank you so much. Um, 
She has performed on important stages in China, Italy, and the US. Uh, Ms. Jan is the recipient of the First Prize Award and Best Scriabin Performance Award at the renowned 2019 Virginia Waring International Piano Competition. Following this victory, she was invited uh, by the Gulf Coast Symphony to play the Chopin Concerto No. 2 in F minor in March 2022. She's also the third prize winner of the 2022 Yale Gordon Competition, the 2020 Svetoslav Richter International Piano Competition, and one of the top three finalists of the 2021 Vladimir Kraniv Moscow International Piano Competition. She started playing piano at the age of five, and at the age of nine, she was accepted to attend the music school affiliated to the Shanghai Conservatory of Music as a recipient uh, of um, annual and multiple other scholarships. Currently, she studies with Dr. Steven Spooner at the Peabody Institute of John Hopkins University. Uh, uh, Janison uh, has performed in many master classes for world-renowned musicians such as Richard Good, uh, Han Kwon Chen, Ursula Opens, and Jerome Lowenthal. And we are going to feature uh, her uh, excerpt of her performing Ravel Scarbo. Take a look. Wonderful, lovely meeting you. And we're going to proceed to a uh, dialogue uh, between the two uh, students. And I have sent some questions to you to uh, think about and provide your answers. So um, question number one, what event circumstances uh, stand out in your mind as the most important in your life? Uh, let's start with Edison. Well, um... I remember uh, I got a keyboard piano when I was around four. Um, and, you know, I played with it, played random notes, did sticks and um, other random things. And then pretty soon my grandma played uh, some pieces and I found out um, I knew all the notes that she played and um, Later, I know that that's called perfect pitch. Um, I think that's the most important in my musical journey. Um, there are other, um, for example, when I first started um, uh, studying with um, John Spooner, um, or when um, 
I really started getting serious about piano, but I think that first moment when I found out I had perfect pitch, that would be um, the most important uh, event in my life, musical life. Sounds great. Jennison? Yeah, I think for me, it would be seeing Tripanov live in Shanghai for the first time. Because I was in middle school and he played a Chopin concert and I had never heard or seen a pianist play um, passages that light with that capacity of lightness and um, just floating in the air. And I was so shocked and inspired. And I remember I was playing Liz Lillicheretta at the time and I went home just pondering about how he made that sound, how he made it so shimmery and pretty and light. And that was very memorable for me. Beautiful, thank you. Next question, uh, share any unique experiences you have had while preparing for your next performance. Edison. Um, well, there are many, but um, the one I remember the most, um, I think I was around seven, six or seven. Um, it was, I was seven. It was 2017. I was preparing for a Kaufman International Piano Competition. And um, I was at Dr. Spooner and Jung Spooner's house. And so at that time, I was little. I couldn't reach the pedal. I was playing variation six of Berkovich's um, variations on the theme of Paganini. And um, I actually broke the A string. Um, and, um, you know, I was like, I'm, and I couldn't really make a lot of sound at that time. And I really was surprised that I could break a string on the, like um, seven foot piano. And so um, we continued the lesson. I just uh, played an octave lower. And yeah, that, I remember that. Have you done that ever since, broken a string? No, I haven't. <laughs> Uh, I think I probably broke one of the strings on uh, on one of the strings on my piano. I think it's a C sharp, um, but it, the um, sound is still there. It doesn't bother me too much. Great story. Thank you. Janison? Uh, well, yeah, um, just last week at Peabody, we had our like annual juries and the way Dr. Spooner helped us prepare was to have us host mock juries, which, which is when all these people in the studio gather together and play for each other. I think this kind of like performance practice are really important and helpful to prepare us for the real event where like pressure and the, and the nervousness is gonna invade you at the moment. So, so pre preparing for that, we have like three mock juries and really help us ease out the face and feel comfortable playing for other people. Great, thank you. Um, next question, uh, name your favorite performers and who they are and what you like about them. Let's start uh, with uh, Jenison. Yeah, I love Yu Jia Wang, uh, not just because she's Chinese and she's amazing, but also because um, the style of her playing is just so powerful and clean and she's like the epitome of technique and musicality. And then she's the moment, she's the queen. And um, I think I, I love her fashion style as well, I guess. And I also love this Korean um, pianist called Yelom Song. I think I love her poetic like elegance in her playing and everything that she plays is just um, like a story and she tells it so well and so captivating. So yeah, I really love them. Beautiful, thank you. Edison? Um, uh, I also like Yu Jia Wang. Uh, I like Horowitz, Richter, Sokolov, Argerich. Uh, many uh, are in my mind, but um, all of um, you know Sokolov, Horowitz, Yu Jia Wang. They all have their own style of playing and how they really um, capture the music and are, you know, both um, both in the music physically and in their sound that they make. Um, 
they not only play the piano, um, they express. And I think um, if I had to choose one, I would choose Martha Ardrich. Great, wonderful. Thanks for sharing. And um, next question, what responsibilities do you feel you have as a, an aspiring young artist, Jameson? Um, I think responsibilities is a really big word, but I feel the need to learn and be a part of the power that is uh, contributing and preserving and enlarging the classical music community and especially the world of piano music, um, which is what Dr. Spooner has always been inspiring us to do, like listen as much as you could and learn as much as you could. Um, I think the learning is endless and um, there's so much to explore in the world of piano music. Yeah. Great answer. Edison. And just like Jenison said, I feel like um, learn as much as I could and um, listen to all the great recordings. Um, but also um, when I get older and I have family or whatever, um, <clears throat> I sh like all the teaching I received, I should um, sort of give back to the next generation of inspiring young pianists um, or really any other profession. Um, and um, yeah, I think that what I received when I was uh, very young, I should also give to the next generation. Fantastic answers, you guys. Uh, what about career choices that inspire you? Uh, Edison. Well, um, doctors, surgeons, um, they require great precision. Um, mm. There are certain um, positions in engineering. And certainly there isn't one that inspires me the most, um, but if I had to pick one, um, I mean, also pianists, um, they inspire me in their way of communicating their art. But I would say surgeons because they have to operate on patients. Um, they basically work round the clock um, and they require extreme levels of precision. Um, and yeah. Great. Jenison? Yeah, um, I think for me, I really admire musicians who, who um, would run their social platforms as one way to communicate with each other and other musicians. I really like Two Set Violin and Tiffany Poon, who has these wonderful YouTube channels that can make classical music so accessible to audiences all over the world who may not or may not have been like have the music education or the background, they can find these videos so entertaining and interesting and they can also be inspired by the, the magic of classical music. So I think um, combining the internet and the technology that runs the 21st century with our love and passion of the music is very inspiring. Wonderful. Well, thank you, you guys. A fantastic conversation with you too. Uh, and now we're going to proceed with a picture gallery for Edison. And just like Stephen did, you just tell us a little bit about each picture. Oh, um, I think this one was at the first Chicago International Piano Competition. Um, there I am with Dr. Spooner. Um, and I think I, this is at Wheaton College. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this was the award ceremony. So that's what this picture is. <laughs> um, I think this one is my first piano competition, uh, KMTA in Topeka. Um, 
actually, no, this was, I forget, this was at a, wait, oh yeah, I remember. It's um, Los Angeles Piano Competition in 2016. Um, I think I got an honorable mention. And I remember that um, I was actually quite sad that I didn't win a uh, like a second, third or first place. So yeah, that's Los Angeles. <laughs> this is my first piano competition, KMTA. I, I actually held the trophy backwards. Um, it's, um, I think, 2015. Yeah, it was 2015, I got second prize. So it was very memorable. Oh, this is at a chess competition. I think it was my first one as well. Um, I was unrated at that time. Um, uh, I think I won four out of the five games and the game that I lost, I cried a lot. <laughs> this I think is also at um, the Chicago competition. I think it was at their I think it was 2019 with Dr. Uh, Briginski uh, of um, e-competition. And I think I won first place that year. Um, I remember I had a few master classes and um, we got uh, a new venue for the winner's recital um, at Whedon College, so yeah. This is a Kaufman competition, uh, winner's concert. Um, I think I played Flight of the Bumblebee. It's on YouTube. And I think this is me exiting. Yeah. This is a uh, Steinway Gallery um, here in Overland Park. Uh, I played a recital not too long ago. I think it was about uh, a few weeks ago, um, I played a recital and it was um, the first time I played a recital since uh, with Dr. Spooner since I have to say 2020, yeah. <laughs> um, this is me with um, an upright piano. I was really excited that I had a piano that had keys that were like, that actually struck strings. Um, and I forget what music I was playing, but it was, I was like, oh cool, this thing's pretty hard to play. <laughs> Um, I think this is um, a Steinway competition. I'm not too sure. Um, and this is me with Jung Spooner. Um, and I think I won first prize. And um, it was like my first prize, my first first prize outside KMTA. So I was really happy about it. Uh, this is me making a recording uh, at Swarth out uh, recital hall in, at KU. Um, <clears throat> they have you know these really nice pianos, and um, I think that time I got the better of the two. So I just wanted to make a make a memory um, since I haven't I won't be going there for recordings anytime soon. Wonderful. And we're going to now play uh, a second uh, video, uh, 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 Chopin, Scherzo, and B minor. Take a look. Thank you. 
Wonderful, Edison. Uh, lovely meeting you and thanks so much for joining us today. We're wishing you all the best in your- Thank you. Of course, moving on to Janison and we're gonna proceed with her picture gallery. Um, this was when in senior year in high school, me and my best friend, we we kind of got this um, like graduation recital of just the two of us and we got to play some of our um, pieces for, for college and then and then there were like, um, I, I think 200 people there it was very memorable because it was like graduating moment. Uh, this was last year at Rebecca Penny's Piano Festival in Tampa, Florida. Um, I had a lot of really great master classes there, and Dr. Smith was also there. And um, it was very memorable because this was um, at the ending concert, which everyone got to play, and in there, it was very good festival. Um, this was also senior year, but it was. Um, a recital um, organized by my former teacher at Shanghai. Um, so her four graduating seniors um, had a concert together and I was the last one to play. Uh, this recital was in Nanjing, which is my hometown. It was very um, precious to me because all my family could come to the concert and hear me play. But what was kind of disappointing was um, that was also the time when COVID hit and there was a restriction, so they couldn't come at the end. And so they had to watch live stream, but it was right in Nanjing and they couldn't come. So it was a really small concert, but it was really sad to not have them there, but it was a good, good thing to have. Yeah, this was also the concert at Shanghai with my teacher. It's also concert and yeah. This photo was taken by um, a friend of mine in New York. She's also a great pianist and she she's also a photographer because she likes taking pictures and she's done amazing work. I really, really like her. This was also um, when senior year when I had to come to America and my mom said, you have to get a good photo shoot of yourself. So we went to uh, a like picture, like a place that takes pictures and we got a really good photo. Yeah. This was also the picture that took taken in Nanjing, which is my hometown. My mom took this, so it was very nice. Beautiful. Okay, next we're going to play uh, Janison's second uh, video performance of Chopin Etude of the Story of Another Sex. Take a look. Thank you. 
wonderful meeting you, uh, Jenison, and we too uh, wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And thank you so much for joining us today. And to conclude our program, we'll feature Stephen's uh, video of uh, DBC um, uh, Prelude, like Colleen's Dana Capri. Take a listen. Wonderful, Stephen. Great uh, to meet you face-to-face uh, -face on Zoom. Uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, accepting my invitation to join this broadcast. And thank you to all of you and wishing uh, you a fantastic uh, day and fantastic summer coming up. Thank uh, to all our listeners and subscribers for joining us today. And we wish you a wonderful summer as well. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.